Well, good day, everyone, and thank you for coming back to the next video. I think this might this might be my 337th video. I think I started doing this back uh, April 20th, 2017, and the, the the themes of my YouTube channel, from a biblical perspective, are God coming and taking the little ones like a thief in the night, or when Jesus he makes that warning to the dead churches, the the church of Sardis. He says, you do not know which day I will come against you. I will come against you like a thief. And we know that that theme is from, from the mouth of Jesus as many places. He's going to come like a thief and steal away the little ones. Now, Gwen, Gwendolyn Song had a prophetic word about this the other day, and I would highly recommend going to, to her. Let me just pull it up real quick. Um, and I've done many videos. I'm sorry, it's not say who. I've done many videos on this topic, and it, it's always a little interesting when people want to say things like, God will never do that. Chapter 20. This is her This is her video. People will say, God would never do that. And I, I look at that and think, well, okay, but his word says he's going to do it. And if you read the Old Testament unfulfilled prophets, he will surely do it. And... You guys have seen me talk about this many times in the past. I'm not going to go there. You can go to my YouTube page and community page. I've looked. Here, let's go to my community page right now. And let's see those scriptures real quick to justify the prophetic word that Gwendolyn received. Um, yeah. I said, the most important topic for lukewarm, the snatching away of the little ones. See Gwendolyn's words here. And you can download a transcript of her words. There's two of them she has. I have them both here. And then you can go and download the Bible scriptures that talk about this. And these are, these are just part of them. There's many more. Um, the one in Luke 23 is the most telling one about the daughters of Jerusalem. Why do you uh, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves? For there will be a day when society will say, uh, how lucky and blessed it is for women to not be pregnant and for women to not be nursing a child. And the reason society will be saying that is because the little ones have been taken and the breasts have dried up. Like it says here, Hosea 9, this is an unfulfilled Old Testament prophecy that our Christian churches of today completely blow off and ignore. The prophet speaks to God and God's, the prophet says, Lord, what are you going to do? Lord, what are you going to give these lukewarm? And God himself says, not Gwendolyn, not any of the modern day prophets. He says, I'm going to give them a miscarrying womb and dry breasts. <clears throat> and that would fulfill the prophecy made by Jesus where he says, how dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Okay, That's because Jesus fulfilled his other prophecy where he says, Let the little children alone. Do not hinder them from coming to me. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. The little children belong to the kingdom of heaven. They don't belong to their earthly parents. So th this idea is an absolute um, fanatical stance. If you were to go through the churches today in America and start teaching and preaching this, they would think you're crazy. But that's exactly what God's word says. And when you go to Gwendolyn's word, her word alludes to the same thing. Now, luckily, there's many people here that are agreeing with her. But every once in a while, you'll see somebody that says, God would never do that. God would never do what his word says he's going to do. And that's a that's a, um, that's a a sent a statement that we obviously know is not true. Okay, so that's not why. That's not, I just wanted to put that part back into this video and make light of the fact of Gwendolyn's recent word. Okay, so one of the other topics that I've spoken about um, on my YouTube channel I'm going to talk about here in a minute is this idea of the coming of the Lord. So one of the, here I have it right here, if you go to my YouTube channel and you search videos for coming day of the Lord, you'll see I have a few videos here where I talk about this. This one's five months old, that's two years old. I knew I do. I did videos very early on about this topic, and you, you click on the video. Um, you can see that I'm. Uh, I have a study document there. If you go to the comments, my my comment here, and you can download. Click on the the study document, and you can download, and you can have the scriptures for yourself. 
And so this particular document has been updated to show the recent um, discovery, in my opinion, of, of why everybody is going to be freaking out when the day of the Lord comes. So let's go ahead and go to my, my study document, and you guys can download this. This is the exact same study document I've been using now for at least three or four years. Now, I've tweaked it a little bit here and there, but it starts off like this. It says, what will it be like when Messiah comes to the earth? His faithful followers will be gathered, and then he begins judgment of his own apostate, lukewarm people, those who have strayed from him. It will be a great day for the faithful, and a terrible day for the lukewarm and unbelievers. That's why in chapter 2 of Joel it says, For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can abide in it? So when you read Psalm 50, you learn that God, right as he's coming to judge his own people, he does gather his faithful ones first, and we call that a pre-tribulation rapture. That's Some folks want to argue about that, but that's right there. When you read Psalm 50, this is God coming to the earth, and this is not God coming to the earth in Revelation 19. There's no mention of God coming to the earth with a devouring fire and a tempest all around him. If you read Revelation 19, Revelation 19 has no mention of darkness, devouring fire, tempest, the earth being utterly broken, torn apart, none of that. That's all at the beginning of the seven years, actually the beginning of the one year uh, prior to the seven years, which is the the one year of warning for the woman, and the one year for the redeemed, and the one year of recompense that Jesus speaks about. So our God comes, he doesn't keep silent, before him as a devouring fire, around him as a mighty tempest. Okay, he calls to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his own people. And then verse 5 is the pre-tribulation rapture. Okay, Gather to me my faithful ones see, who made a covenant with me by sacrifice, the living sacrifice that Paul speaks about in Romans 12. The heavens declare his righteousness for God himself is judge. Then he says, Hear, O my people, I will speak. O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. And Israel here is the whole house of Israel, all 12 or 13 tribes. But technically the 13th tribe is the firstborn tribe of Ephraim. So this, these 12 tribes are those of the lukewarm that are left behind, that are not part of the firstborn. Okay, so... What I recently came to realize was when we read through all of these Day of the Lord verses, people are freaking out. My anguish. I'll go back and read the words of Jesus. But I've always wondered, what is it that they, that's causing all of this panic and this no peace and all of this? What is it? Something is coming upon the earth. So the, re, uh, the words of Jesus, and there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and on the earth distress in the nations uh, for the perplexity because of the roaring of the seas and the waves, people fainting with fear and foreboding for what is coming. Something is coming on the world for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Okay, Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with great glory. Remember, there's no mention of the abomination here. See, Luke 21 is not about that. This is the beginning of the seven years. Okay. Then it says, straighten up. Jesus says, straighten up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Something of a redeeming nature is coming near the earth. And that day will come upon you suddenly like a trap. Here it is right now. For it, it will come upon the, all those who dwell on the face of the earth. But keep alert at all times, praying that you have the strength to escape all these things that are about to take place and stand before the Son of Man. So there's a group of people who are faithful, who have prayed to escape and stand before the Son of Man. I want to be part of that group. Jeremiah 4 speaks of the same thing. Behold, he comes up like the clouds. He's coming to gather his faithful followers. He has these chariots that are like a whirlwind. These chariots of salvation we learn about in Habakkuk 3. These same chariots that are listed in Psalm 68. The same type of chariot that Elijah was able to escape to heaven on. Okay, And the people say, my anguish, my anguish, I writhe in pain on the walls of my heart. My heart is beating wildly. I can't keep silent. I keep hearing that trumpet and seeing that crazy sign in the sky. I keep seeing that sign and hearing that trumpet. I don't want to hear that anymore. 
And then the Lord says, my people are foolish. They know me not. They are stupid children. Okay, so something's coming on the earth while the Lord is riding a horse with a chariot. Okay, we learn in Habakkuk 3, he has a bow too, by the way. Isaiah 13, the same type of thing. All human hearts will melt. Pangs, agony will seize them like a woman in labor. There's that woman in labor reference. This is how we learn about what is coming on the earth. It's the new city, Jerusalem. It's coming near the earth. It's going to light up the sky with the brightness of his coming. I'll go to those verses in a minute. Isaiah 24, the earth is utterly broken. It's split apart, violently shaking. The earth staggers like a drunken man. Okay, Jeremiah 30, a cry of panic, no peace. Why is every face turned pale? A time of distress for Jacob, the left behind apostate Jacob. Ezekiel 21 is just like Luke 21. It says, because of the news that it is coming, every heart will melt, all hands will be feeble, every spirit will faint, all knees will be weak as water. Behold, it, the new city Jerusalem, our redemption, is coming upon the earth. And it's going to be a shining city on a hill that Jesus mentions that's going to light up the sky. And remember, with the brightness of Jesus' coming, that's when he kills the Antichrist. So he'll go to the pit of hell and be waiting there for the angel of Baden to let him up. He'll come up and rise out of the pit of hell, as it says in Revelation 11, and he'll kill the two witnesses. But first, the Antichrist must go to the pit of hell because Jesus is going to kill him with the sword. That's what the scriptures say. And I went off on a tangent. I don't have those scriptures in front of me, but if you've listened to some of my recent videos, I show those scriptures. Joel 2, same thing. The sun and moon are darkened when this event occurs. But then Joel 2 says that anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be able to escape to the heavenly Mount Zion and the new city Jerusalem, this floating city above the sky. Why do I keep saying that? I say that because my recent video, if you saw my recent video, I go through all of this. This, this city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, is this Mount Zion where there's going to be a, a festival gathering. I've spoken about that. With the church of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. Okay, so here in Revelation 21, we learn about this city, about how eventually after the 1,000 years, it's going to come down out of heaven and unite with the new earth that we don't have yet. But this city still resides. It still exists. How do we know that? Because in Psalm 48, we're given the clue. So this woman in labor is referenced 13 times in Scripture. This is why I love the Bible. It tells us what's going to happen. You just search the woman in labor, and you'll find it 13 times in the Old Testament. And the very first time you find this reference to a woman in labor, it actually gives us the clue about why there these people are in anguish so let me read it great is the lord and great to be praised is the city of our god his holy mountain beautiful in elevation means high up lifted up above the earth the joy of all the earth the the mount zion which is an area inside the new city jerusalem where the lord has his throne this mount zion is the farthest northern part of this um, of this heavenly city. Within her citadels, her walls, God will make known himself a fortress. For behold, the kings are assembled, they come together. As soon as they saw it, this it, this new city, Jerusalem, they were astounded, they were in panic, they took flight, trembling took hold of them as anguish as a woman in labor. So I just note here, the kings of the earth will not be running and hiding in Revelation 21. That's after the 1,000 years. Jesus would have already been here for 1,000 years and fixed all those issues. It's Revelation 6 when they are running and hiding. Okay, so this it that's listed here, this it, this city, that's coming upon the earth, that's going to be made known when God rolls back the scroll at the sixth seal. This is the same it that Ezekiel 21 is referring to. It, the new city Jerusalem, is coming. It's freaking people out because of its how large it is. It's going to be huge. It's the size of the moon, practically. And when it comes near the earth, 
People are going to look up and it's going to fill the entire sky. This it is the same one that Jesus is speaking about. It for it. So for years I've done this study. I never knew what it was. It it what was, was I was curious. No clue for years and years and years. Finally, now, after studying the Bible and finding this it in Psalm 48, it's not the Antichrist riding a white horse. It's none of that. It's the new city, Jerusalem, that we are going to escape to it. How do I know that? Psalm 60 says that. It says that we're going to flee to this scary sign in the sky. That's what it says in Psalm 60. So here's the references to this woman in labor. So what you can do is you can, I'm not going to go through all, you can go to each one of these chapters in the Old Testament and you can read further commentary about what is going to happen uh, when all this is going down. So this, it happens in Jeremiah 50 where Babylon's destroyed. It's all over the Bible. It's 13 times. I'm not going to go through all of them. You can read about it here. So we can use the Bible to tell us what's going to happen. Instead of just thinking up things about, you know, I read I read prophetic words sometimes and they try to scare you to death. When I guess, yes, for those who are non-believers, it's going to be a terrible time. But for us who are watching right now, it'll be a glorious time, just as it says here, right here. For the day of the Lord is great and wonderful for us, the faithful, who have already sold out for Jesus, and we've submitted our bodies as living sacrifices. Okay, so let me go to this study I did. Um, this right here, I did this, did this study two, three weeks ago, and I was all over this brightness that when the Lord comes, He's going to come with brightness of lightning. He's going to light up the sky. Here, look Isaiah 30. In the day of the great slaughter of the kings of the earth when they're all sent down to the pit of hell moreover the light of the moon will be as the light of the sun and the light of the sun will be a sevenfold as the light of seven days in the day when the lord binds up the brokenness of his people and heals their wounds behold the lord comes from afar burning with his anger and in thick smoke rising his lips are full of fury and his tongue is a devouring fire so this brightness we're going to have seven days it appears when this shining city on a hill, this floating city in the sky, is going to be hovering above the earth, gathering his faithful. Where did I get that from? Well, you can read into what's actually going down, but why is it going to be seven days? Well, the prophet speaks about these seven days right here. So this shining city on a hill is going to be causing the brightness. So the sun... It's going to be dark. We won't even see the sun. When this thing comes near the earth and the scroll is pulled back, it's going to light up the sky just as it says in these, I don't know, five or six references. Right here, this is what else is going to happen. It says, and then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord Jesus will kill with the breath of his mouth and bring to nothing by the brightness of his coming, of the coming of Jesus. When that new city, Jerusalem, that shining city on a hill that's described in Matthew, comes near the earth. And then he'll kill the head of the house of the wicked. He'll crush him, laying him bare from thigh to neck. At the same time he's doing all this, he's saving his people. You are now to save your people, to save them with your anointed. Psalm 77. Same type of thing. The crash of your thunder was a whirlwind. Your lightnings lighted up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Psalm 97. Fire goes before him and burns up all of his adversaries around. His lightnings light up the world and the earth sees and trembles. You know, I'm not going to go through this all. Here, here Jesus is riding on a cherub and he flew out of the brightness before him. So I'm not, this is page after page of brightness. We just need to read the word of God and we can find out what's going to happen when he comes. I think... Oh, there's one thing I want to show you guys. I posted this a while back. I worked on a timeline, a harvest timeline, on March 8th, 2020. 
Okay, so I created this harvest timeline back on March 8, 2020 to record my thoughts on the Lord's plan for the first and second harvests. So I used a regular whiteboard with a black marker to write this. After I was done, I took out my cell phone camera to document the whiteboard, and I took a picture with my cell phone camera. Now notice the cell phone camera and what happened. What, what do you see here? What, now ignore the red ink. The, the red ink is I copied this on here. But there was this mysterious block of shininess when I did this. What in the world? That's a camera thing. There's a little bit of shininess down here. This is a camera anomaly from when I took a picture of this whiteboard. There must have been light shining in the room or coming through the window. And it caused, when I took the picture, this rectangular block. And it turns out, now I, I took this red ink and I wrote over top of the picture. It, it turns out that this block of shininess looks to be seven days in length. So this is my timeline here. I have no idea if this timeline's correct. It was just my thoughts back on March 8th. I still hold pretty much to it. This is the month of Nisan. Today is the 10th day of Nisan. So I don't know what calendar the Lord is using. And I don't know if this is the year. But this is what I wrote a year ago. And there appears to be a block of seven days of brightness. Okay, So this is just what came out of it. I didn't plan this. This could be an absolute coincidence that just occurred but we know we don't believe in coincidences. So when I came to realize this and saw this from a friend of mine, I said, that's really odd. I didn't recognize it until about a year later. And then I came across this verse about this. In the day of the great slaughter, when the towers fall, moreover, the light of the moon will be as the light of the sun. The light of the sun will be sevenfold, as in the light of seven days, when that new shining city comes upon the earth. Remember the days of the Son of Man. So I just knew that there was something special about these, this rectangular block of seven days of shininess. When you read these scriptures here, it just jumps off the page. And in this, as in light of seven days, in the day when the Lord binds up the brokenhearted and the brokenness of, and he heals those whose wounds have been afflicted, behold, the name of the Lord comes from afar, burning with his anger and thick rising smoke. His lips are full of fury and his tongue is like a devouring fire. But while all of this brightness is going on, look what, the, look what the prophet writes. You shall have a song as in the night when a holy feast is kept, the gladness of heart, as when one sets out to the sound of the flute to go to the mountain of the Lord, to the rock of Israel. I think this could be when the group goes early in the morning, in the middle of the night maybe, to, to fulfill the Swedish boy rapture vision where people will be called to the mountain of the Lord and be there at 7 a.m. Sweden time, which for North America is in the middle of the night. So you guys can download this document. Um, if I was to speculate on a calendar, I don't know the calendar. I have this listed here as Nissan 1. We've already had Nissan 1. We don't know the calendar the Lord is using. I couldn't tell you. It might not be this year. It might be next year. I don't know. So I just could not let this seven days of brightness go by without sharing this with you guys. I posted this a while back on my community page, but I didn't do a video about it. So, you know, I've speculated that this Nissan 1 could be April 1, could be March 30th. I don't know. So with that, guys, I'll let you go. Have a great day, and God bless you.